right, in this video, we're going to look at how to create a circular thermometer that goes from some negative degrees to some positive degrees. This circular thermometer that you see here does have Fahrenheit on the outside and Celsius on the inside, and right now it's about 77 degrees Fahrenheit according to this thermometer. The math involved here is a little bit tricky because we do have to account for some negative degrees and we're going to some positive degrees. This thermometer is inside of a component. You can get this component for free from my free components folder just look for circular thermometer inside of that component let's go over to globals and let me show you a few things here before we dive into the tutorial test is off if test is off look at this code down here for the text global temp if GV test is on we want to use GVT temp if GV test is off we want to use the actual temperature WI weather info that is the custom function and for temp it will give you the current temperature since test is off, if we look at this temp, it is 77 degrees, as I mentioned a moment ago. If I cut the test on, it's going to change this GV temp to 108. Now, where is 108 coming from? If I scroll down a little bit, it's basically whatever this number global variable is right here. And this is allowing me to change and test the temperature. And if you're looking, you're seeing that the needle is moving. And if I stop on, say, whatever, 48, it's right on 48 or pretty much daggone close. Something else you may have noticed too was that the colors are changing. So when I hit 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it's gonna to change to a blue. That's how I have these color globals that you see here adjusting or changing dynamically based on whatever GV temp is. And then we have the needle. What I wanna show you in this video is how to get that needle to move correctly based on going from some negative degrees to some positive degrees. And one more thing to show you too is if I go all the way to like negative 30, well notice my thermometer stops at negative 20. I have it set such that if it's anything less than negative 20, we're not gonna move. The needle is going to stay at negative 20. Now if I go to negative 20 for my test, you notice that the needle is not moving. But as soon as I start increasing my temperature, you are going to see that the needle does move. The same applies over here at 120. So right now I'm at 123, 124, 125. It stops at 120. And then anything less than 120, the needle will move. So basically anything between negative 20 and positive 120, the needle is going to adjust. I'm going to cut that test back off reflecting the actual temperature. And again, that's based off of this GV temp. A quick way to see a test temperature versus the actual temperature. Now for the items, there's an overlap group that has, well, everything inside of it. And inside of there, we have the thermometer image. I did create this thermometer in Affinity Designer. Yes, you could use the progress feature in KOWP or any custom app. However, sometimes getting them to line up perfectly doesn't work out quite like I wanted it to. And plus I wanted to have some different lines in here for you know the 10 degree increments on the Fahrenheit and then the inside lines for Celsius. And again, you could try using this in the progress. You could do some tweaking, but the way I made it in Affinity Designer using the angles and stuff, everything lines up daggone near perfect. Now, what it boils down to is you're gonna have to do some math to get this stuff to work. I want you to look at the green that we have right now around this outside piece here. This green covers 280 degrees on the thermometer that I've made. Now you could make it more or less, but we have to keep that angle in mind, 280 degrees. What we also have to keep in mind is, is how far is the current temperature? Right now is 77. How far is 77 degrees from negative 20 degrees? A quick way we can do that is to take 77 minus a negative 20. Well, that's really the same thing as 77 plus 20. So technically 77 degrees right now is 97 degrees from negative 20. So look at that 97 that I have there. I'm going to divide that by how many degrees, what's the furthest I can be from negative 20. Now remember, this thermometer peaks out at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I can do here is I can take 97 degrees out of 140, not 120. Because if we go from negative 20 to positive 120, we're actually covering 140 degrees over the course of 280 degrees on this circle. Now I know I'm using degrees twice here because we got degrees for Fahrenheit and Celsius and then we have degrees on a circle. 97 degrees represents the change in temperature from negative 20 up to 77 out of a total change of 140 degrees in temperature. 
because from negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a total change of 140. Now, to get the degree that we're going to do in a minute, we're going to find that percentage or that decimal of the total number of degrees that we cover in regards to this partial circle. Now, I mentioned a moment ago, the number of degrees angle-wise is 280 all the way around to here. So if I multiply that by 280, this is giving me the angle that I want to rotate from here all the way over here. Now, if you're using Celsius as your main temperature thing, then you're going to have to change some of the pieces in the code that I'm going to show you right here in a second. Just a few numbers, that's all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to create this needle. So I'm going to add another overlap group, and I'm going to call this Rotate Test Needle. And inside of that overlap group, we want to add another overlap group. This is important. And I'm going to call this overlap group the test needle. So we have the test needle overlap group sitting inside of another overlap group called rotate test needle. So inside of the test needle overlap group, let's create a needle. I'm just going to make a rectangle here, make it somewhat wide, but very thin in terms of height. Now, what I want to do inside of here is I do not want to rotate this needle that I'm making. What I want to do is I'm going to apply some padding. You can do left or right. It will affect the number of degrees we're going to be moving it in a second, but I'm just going to apply some left padding. This left padding is applied so that we can somewhat center the needle, however you may want to center it, and the edge is going to line up with these lines on the outside of our thermometer. This is all we want to do for this needle here. No rotation to the actual shape. However, let's take the layer of this overlap group called the test needle and let's take this needle and let's rotate it to where we can line it up with negative 120. So with the rotation set to manual, let's just start dragging this thing a little bit and I want you to see what the needle is doing. So it's moving clockwise and I want it to be right around there somewhere and I know exactly where it needs to be. It needs to be at 130. Why is it 130 in my case? Because a little while ago, in terms of angles, the degrees and angles from here all the way around to here, the angle measure is 280 degrees. If you think about a full circle, a full circle is 360 degrees. So if we take 360 degrees, subtract 280 degrees, that leaves us with 80 degrees. So the gap that we have inside of here, that angle is going to be 80 degrees. So if I set this offset back to zero, if I go to 90, it's going to be pointing straight down. And let's think about this. So zero, 90, we said this entire gap was 80. And if everything is centered, that means this gap here is 40 and this gap here is 40. So I need to move an additional 40 degrees to cover this gap to line up with negative 20. Therefore, 90 plus 40 gives us the 130. We are lining up perfectly right there. So that is the test needle overlap group. We apply padding to the rectangle, and then I use the rotation of the test needle overlap group to line it up. Now what I want to do is I want to back out and I want to go to rotate test needle, and now I'm going to apply some rotation to this. So this rotation is also set to manual, and the offset right now is zero, and it's lining up with negative 20 perfectly. If I go up to 280 degrees, Notice it lines up perfectly with the 120. As I mentioned, 280 degrees angle-wise is how many degrees we're covering over the scope of this whole thermometer. So anytime the temperature is at 120 or higher, I want it to stay at 280. Anytime the temperature is at negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, I want it to stay at zero. Now you'll have to do some conversions for Celsius if you're using Celsius. The thermometer will still line up, but the numbers I'm getting ready to use here, you will have to use something a little bit different for Celsius. So for this offset, we want to apply a code because this is what we want to change dynamically. And that code is going to be if GV temp, now GV temp's one of two numbers, either the test temp or the actual temperature, depending on our global switch. If GV temp is less than negative 20, then we don't want to move anything less than negative 20 degrees. We want it to stop. Well, that offset's going to be zero. That's what you saw a moment ago. When the needle is on negative 20, the offset of this overlap group that we're in right now, its offset is zero. Well, what if GV temp is not less than negative 20? Let's do another one. 
GV temp is greater than 120. So once we hit 120, if it hits 121, 122, 123, we don't want to go past that. So anytime GV temp's greater than 120, we want it to stop on 280 degrees for our offset. But now we have several temperatures in here where we're between negative 20 degrees and positive 120. Now you want to change these to whatever negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit is and 120 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. So these are two numbers that you will change if your primary temperature is Celsius. And then finally, what's the last thing we wanna do? Anytime we're in between negative 20 and 120, I mentioned earlier with the little calculator that you saw at the top up here, we want to find the difference between whatever the current temperature is and our minimum. Our minimum in this case is negative 20, or if you're using Celsius, make sure you use the Celsius number here. Find the difference between those two numbers. So that's gonna be GV temp minus our minimum here, which is the negative 20. But since we're subtracting a negative 20, I can just really say plus 20. I want to find that difference. So I'm going to do my order of operations and group it. We want to divide this by the total change from negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 140 degrees. Now, if you're using Celsius here, you will need to find the change of whatever negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius is, whatever 120 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius is, find the difference between those two numbers and put that right there. And then if you're using this same formula with 280 degrees, we're finding a percentage or a decimal of 280. Close that up. Dollar symbol 194. That sounds familiar, right? That's what we saw in the calculator a little while ago because I'm assuming the temperature has not changed. But with that set, it's basically the exact same code that I have for the red needle. That's why everything is lining up. So if I go over here to globals now, I cut my test on. It's going to change. The color changes as well. I'm not going to cover the color changes here. I got plenty of videos on that. But if I come down here and I start, uh, let's go above 120. Notice both of them are moving at the same spot. But once I go over 120, the needle stop moving because I have it maxed out at 280 degrees offset. Let's back down. And now we're at negative 13. Both of them are lined up nicely. And when I hit negative 20, anything past or lower than negative 20, the needle stop moving because I have that offset of the rotate test needle overlap group. I have it coded to stop at zero offset anytime our temperature is less than negative 20. And there you have it. That's the math involved in rotating this needle, especially helpful when you're going from some negative degrees for your minimum to your maximum, in this case of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Feel free to pick this up again from my free components folder. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.